All right, everyone, welcome back to another video. And as promised, this video is going to be on side chain compression. So if you are just getting familiar with compression, how it works in production, sound design, if you are working on mixing, you're starting to put together tracks in a DAW like Logic or Pro Tools or Cubase, then this video is for you. If you're just getting into compression, trying to figure out how it works, what it does, how to use it, go ahead and check out my intro to compression series on this channel. There are five separate videos that go over pretty in depth about everything to do with compression. Definitely check out those videos first, or if you just wanna know about sidechain compression, check out this video. For starters, I just wanna show you what I have in my project right now. It's really simple. I just have two sources. I have a static pad sound that sounds like this. Okay, I think it's a C minor pad. And then I have this four on the floor kick drum. Okay, we've all heard that before. All right, so what is side chain compression? Well, Side chain compression allows you to compress one source, but using the input of another source. The example I have right here is one of the most common ways that it is used. And what you get is sort of this pumping or a ducking effect. Often it's called ducking. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open a compressor on the pad channel. So basically, when you're doing sidechain, what you want to do is choose the signal that you want the sidechain effect to happen to. Okay, I know that's a little bit strange, but basically, we are going to have our kick drum affect the compression on the pad channel. So every time the kick drum sounds, it's going to pump or it's going to duck our pad channel. And this is a very popular effect in modern production. So I think I've got it fired up right here. Let me just go ahead and show you what it sounds like and then we'll break it down and I'll go into how it works and how to make it happen. Okay, so you may have heard that effect before if you've listened to electronic music. It's most popular in electronic music, but it's it can be used very creatively in many different contexts. Another very common way is to use sidechain compression on bass guitar. So if you're you're in a rock rock and roll context, you're playing rock music and you're doing a rock mix. Um, sometimes we really want that kick drum to cut through the mix. But we all know that the kick drum is in the same frequency range as the bass, right? So sometimes they can compete. They're competing for the same frequency space in a mix. So how do we get that kick drum to punch through just a little bit more? Well, we can use side chain compression. So you can put a compressor on your bass guitar track and you can side chain to the kick drum and every time the kick drum hits, it's gonna duck the amplitude or volume of the bass. So it creates a little window for the kick drum to just shine through every time it's hit. So that's really great because if you're, if you're tracking a drum set and you have a real player playing, he's probably not gonna hit the kick drum at the same place every time. So this allows the compressor to do the work. And so every time it detects a signal, it's gonna go ahead and duck that bass guitar signal or whatever other channel you have it on. So today, we're using this example. Uh, we're staying in the electronic realm. We just have a, sort of an ambient pad sound and we have this kick drum sample. So let's go ahead and break it down and let's see what's happening. So for starters, in Logic, go ahead and open your compressor and what you wanna do is come up to your upper right hand corner here and choose the sidechain option. Now, 
it, the default is to be off, so it'll say none. When you go up here, you can select from any channel that you have in your project. Right now, I only have two channels, and so the only one that's even available to choose is the kick drum. That's perfect, that's what I wanna use. So I choose kick drum. So now the compressor knows to listen for the kick drum signal. And it's going to compress based on that signal. But the compression is going to affect our pad. So every time the kick drum sounds, it's going to lower the amplitude of our pad. And since we have a very rhythmic kick, it creates this very rhythmic pattern. So it's almost actually like a tremolo where you're ducking the amplitude of the pad in this very regular rhythmic way. And that can just be pleasing. It can add more movement and interest to your track. Again, let's, let's compare and contrast. So I'm gonna turn the compressor off entirely. Here's just the tracks as I have them in Logic. So that's fine, but you know, it's, it's kind of bland. There's not much going on. Granted, I don't have any other elements. I don't have a bass drum. I don't, uh, sorry, I, I don't have a bass. I don't have a melody. I don't have any other sound. So of course it's kind of bland, but check this out. Once I turn the compressor on and the side chain is enacted, let's hear it. So that's just more interesting to listen to. You know, it, it kind of, perks your ears up a little bit more. Okay, so how are we doing it? Well, it's actually fairly simple. The first thing, like I said, is you choose the source that you want the compressor to react to. And in this case, we're choosing the kick drum. Now we go to the side chain controls. And you can see here that Logic actually has a lot of controls for the side chain parameter which is great because this is just gonna allow you to dial it in that much more specifically. So you can really get it to work with your mix and your track and your application. So I really applaud Logic on going pretty deep into this and giving you a lot of features. So let's go ahead and just define what we're looking at. Under the detection section, so what we're doing when we're, when we're selecting these parameters is we're choosing the way the stereo sidechain signals are handled at the sidechain input. If you choose max, you would turn on the max button to compress both channels if either stereo channel exceeds or falls below the threshold. So what that means is in a stereo signal, you have a left and right. So if you choose max, that means anytime either the left or right amplitude level crosses our threshold that we're setting here, it's gonna activate the side chain. Maybe, you know, not all signals are exactly the same and they really shouldn't be. You want that variation going from left to right. Again, it, it's just more organic, it's more natural. If everything is the same, if it's uniform left and right, it's not as interesting. So this is saying when we have signals that are varying on the left channel and the right channel, it's just gonna grab either one. So if your left channel is a little bit louder sometimes, it'll grab that one. If your right channel is a little bit louder, it'll grab that one. So what is the sum parameter? What's the sum option? When we enable the sum button, the combined level of both channels must exceed the threshold before compression occurs. So this is fairly advanced, so it's it's doing some math here. So it's it's combining the output of both channels, it's summing them, and it's gonna need that summed output to cross the threshold for it to act. So in my opinion, that's gonna be a more balanced, a more even way to trigger our compressor. If we want the max, that's gonna be kind of what it sounds like. That means it's going to trigger basically whenever it can. So anytime either side of the stereo channel exceeds the threshold, it's gonna trigger it. So this is gonna be a more dramatic setting, a little bit less of a dramatic setting on the sum. So what is peak and RMS? They're used in conjunction with the max and sum buttons. 
So you choose the peak or RMS to determine whether signal peaks or a signal average is used for detection. These can help with avoiding artifacts such as clicks in the process signal depending on the type of audio material and parameter settings, notably the attack. So peak refers to the loudest point of amplitude when you're playing back. So again, most sources, they vary. So not every time an audio event comes through is it exactly the same. So the peak is the very top amplitude measured in decibels. So again, they set it up in a pretty logical way, ironically for logic. So the peak is going to be a more dramatic setting because any it, it's reacting to the peaks, which is the highest point of amplitude. The RMS is going to be the signal average. It's very similar to the max and the sum. Let's just play with these and let's listen and use our ears to see what the differences are. So right now I have it in a pretty aggressive uh, setting because I have the max and the peak selected. Let's hear that. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch from max to the sum. Okay, I'm not hearing a lot of difference there and I think the reason is is because my source that's actually triggering the compressor is a mono channel. It's just a mono kick drum. So in this case, we don't even have different left and right levels, so that would make sense. So let's switch between the peak and the RMS and let's listen. Okay, so I think that's pretty obvious to hear. So if you want a more dramatic pumping effect, if you really want your tracks to pump and bounce and move, this is especially relevant if you're making dance music, techno, EDM, anything like that, and you want your tracks to really bounce and move and get the dance floor moving, go ahead and use this peak mode. Um, it really gets it to pump. Now. Your settings over here are gonna affect that as well, and we can get into that a little bit. But you'll notice that the peak really gets it to pump, and the RMS is just way more subtle, so let's listen one more time. All right, so that's that. So moving on, there is a filter section. now. This is really cool because this is just part of the compressor, so you don't have to insert a filter on your actual source channel. You can do it right through the compressor here. If you don't know what a filter is, go ahead and watch my video, which is called What Does a Filter Do? And you'll have a much better understanding of what's going on, but I'll give you a brief overview. So the filter, again, it does exactly that. It filters out frequencies out of your source signal. We have all the different modes here as well. We have low pass, band pass, high pass. We have a parametric EQ, and we have, I assume that's a high shelf. We have our frequency cutoff, which is measured in hertz, and that looks like it's going all the way down. It goes to 16, and it goes all the way down to 19, thousand hertz so 19k so i mean this is beyond the essentially the full spectrum of human hearing so uh they didn't slouch there and then you have your q parameter and the q parameter is the band width okay so that's the the width of your your filter band what this allows you to do is get even more specific with your sound so i have a kick drum signal so a kick drum is almost all in the bass right the majority of the sound is in the bass frequency range but some of the sounds are in the mids and there are some highs sometimes going up to 2k so if we use this listen feature that's going to actually just let us monitor our input signal which in this case is the kick drum channel so let's try that okay so you see when i click the listen 
I don't hear the pad anymore, I just hear the kick drum, which is nice because it really lets you dial it in from within the compressor itself. It's very convenient. So with, with this signal, since it's the majority of the frequencies are in the bass range, I'm gonna use this band pass. And a band pass, it's a movable band. So it's going to be, typically band pass is in the mids, but it's sort of a band that can you know maybe have a range of 200 hertz in either direction so as I sweep this around I'm gonna be able to focus that band on different parts of the kick drum signal so let's do that okay see that now so now that I'm in the 500 range I'm at 466 to be exact now I'm really focused on the mids of the kick drum. And the attack, to me, looks to be a little bit snappier. Let's bring it down. See that? See how it's hitting the needle? It's totally different. Now let's turn it off. Okay, so if you wanted to dial in the exact effect, this is a great way to do it. See, right here in the mids, it feels like it's a little snappier. So let's turn this on. So it's a little snappier, but it's not as dramatic. So let's move this frequency around. So when we focus on the lows, we get more of that pumping effect. Let's turn it off. Okay, so basically the filter is really gonna let you dial in the specifics of how the compressor is gonna respond. Now I wanna go over just a few things about how these parameters are going to affect our sound as well. So let's turn the filter off for now. We're just gonna focus on the parameters. And the main parameter of the compressor is the threshold. And again, if you wanna go over this in more detail, check out my intro to compression series on this channel. The threshold knob really acts like a mix knob when you're working with compression. It really ends up being how dramatic the sound is. The more the needle is jumping on our meter here, the more dramatic the sound is gonna be. So if we stay in this range between zero to five, it's gonna be a less dramatic effect. If we turn up the threshold, the compressor is gonna be acting more and more on your signal and therefore it's gonna be much more dramatic. So let's go ahead and play with that and see what happens. So I'm gonna turn it down. Right, so you can see right here, it's already going to like negative three and we're barely hearing any effect of the side chain and that's because our threshold is just too low. So let's keep turning it up. Okay, so there we can hear that it's working pretty well. Let's just go ahead and jack it. Let's crank it and see what happens. All right. So that's a really dramatic pumping sound. And where is that coming out? That's coming almost to minus 20 on our meter. So that's a lot. That's a significant amount of compression. Now, also, I want to note when you do this, always note your levels over here you can see that as I bring my threshold up it's actually increasing my output so be sure not to clip over here always watch your clipping because if you clip it's just kind of not good engineering you always want to make sure you have space and your gain staging that's a whole nother video as well we'll go over gain staging Okay, let's, let's adjust the ratio and see what that does. So I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit. Let's keep it around 10. And again, when I say 10, I'm referring to the meter, not the level over here. So let's affect our ratio now. Okay, so you'll notice too that lower ratios are not as severe.
Okay, so that's really pumping, all right? So our, our compression is really at like minus 20, and now we're doing a 12 to one ratio. Now let's play with the attack and see how that affects our sound. Okay, so you can see You can see that the sweet spot is somewhere in here. It's between 15 and 50 milliseconds. Attack has all to do with rhythm. So since we have a very rhythmic source here and our kick drum is on quarter notes at 120 BPM, we want to dial in that attack so that it's matching the rhythm of the kick drum. And now our release here is in auto. And even though it's in auto, if you change the knob, it's gonna affect how it responds automatically. The, still on the left side, it's gonna be faster, and on the right side, it's gonna be slower. But it's still gonna use an algorithm to set the release setting. But attack and release are all about rhythm. So I'm gonna turn this off, and let's see if we can't dial it in where it's kind of ideal. Let's see what we can do. Okay, notice when I put the release later, it's creating a different rhythmic effect. It's almost swinging it. It's going like da, ta, 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 instead of da, da, da. Let's hear it again. So when the pad is coming back up in amplitude, it's doing it later in the beat, and it's kind of swinging it more. I actually kind of really like that sound. And so there you go, just by messing around with the parameters a little bit, you might come up with something you didn't expect. So I always recommend just playing around and really use your ears and listen. You never know what's gonna happen. I might have set this over here thinking that that is the more correct way to do it rhythmically, but I like this kind of delayed response. Let's listen to it again. Da, ba, 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 right it's swung let's put it back where that's straighter ba, 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 ba. that's pretty cool so I hope you learned something from this video about sidechain compression. Maybe you can start to use it now in your own productions. If you like this video, go ahead and hit subscribe. I'm going to keep putting a bunch more videos up about production and recording and synthesis and compression and plugins and all this type of stuff. So if you're getting into this type of work or you're just doing it for fun or you want to just make tracks at home, Definitely keep track of this channel. Yeah, go ahead, hit like and subscribe, and stay tuned for the next video. Cheers, have a great day.